Another month, another set of Criterion lineup releasement announcements, and I figured it's the start of a new year. Let's go ahead and go through my entire Criterion collection. Hey, how's it going everyone? Thank you for tuning in to another episode here at Figure Out Films. I'm your host as always, Chris. And like I said, today I'm going to show off my complete Criterion collection. Now, it has been a while since I have shown off my Criterion collection. I've added quite a few things. Um, I've, you know, I've gotten older, I've gotten wiser, and uh, I still like to bash in and make jokes uh, on the expense of the Criterion collection. <laughs> so nothing has changed too much on that end. But as you know, beginning of this year, um, we've already talked about my complete uh, complete Screen Factory collection. And then I also did a live stream, which if you're not subscribed and you wanted to check out those live streams, you're missing out on some great stuff. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button. But we did go ahead and hop on the live stream. And then I did unveil my entire Arrow video collection. So you can go ahead and check that out. Um, so I figured, you know, in light of the boutique labels, uh, I, I'll go ahead and talk about one of the, I would say, former um, cream of the crop, as uh, Macho Man Randy Savage would say. I talk about the Criterion Collection. Um, it's, you know, the beginning of a new year, and uh, I think it's good that we, we start off, you know, I don't think I did this intentionally, but I went ahead and started showing off my entire collection of like boutique labels so you can trust me to be your movie guy in 2024. Like I said, Criterion Collection, if you are new to the channel, you're not sure what Criterion is. It's basically the uh, the, the, the the whole meme of like um, the film student uh, that you see on TikTok, like the, the, the people who think they're like they're smarter than the average moviegoer who just goes watch Deadpool and MCU movies. Uh, they kind of watch like the Nolan films and stuff like that. Well, they think that's high art film, but Criterion, I think at one point really you know, shoulder the title of being like the film lo lover in like the, the high art film watcher. You know, I'm feeling very queasy and nauseous just talking about Criterion and like the tropes of like being a collector of it. And I think like there's a very strong community with them. I would say Criterion collectors are the most vocal um, film community when it comes to Blu-ray collecting, like right next to like the Vinegar Syndrome Sigmas. Like I swear like those two groups are like one and the same from two different spectrums. With When it comes to Criterion, like you're getting a lot of old films, you're getting foreign films, you're getting black and white films, you're getting films from well-regarded um, directors and like their lost works, awesome restorations. And with now, just reproducing the same films on Bruh. 4K? <laughs> Like, I, you know, it's sad but true, someone who likes to upgrade things to 4K. When it comes to FOMO, I don't get it with Criterion. They're constantly updating um, their catalog slowly but surely with uh, with 4K, um, you know, reprints, um, reproductions. And honestly, these monthly announcements that they make, more than half of the films, I would say, are just 4K re-releases of movies you most likely bought on the last sale and you look stupid for doing it. I have really stopped on buying um, a lot of Barnes & Noble sales, Arrow flash sale criterions because of this whole... Um, it, they're, they're kind of becoming Screen Factory where they don't have really that much of an interest in releasing a lot of new films. At least fil films that like... Ah, people who like film but maybe aren't so in the weeds of Tarkovsky and all these avant-garde directors. You know, like want to have high film like high art films like i'm talking like maybe the hitchcock films maybe a few french new wave films maybe i don't know some films to get like entry level film fans into criteria really hasn't been doing that in the last few years they're only re -re like releasing things that are like super obscure honestly to me don't sound very interesting and 4k reprints uh and i don't mean to drag the label and like drag the people who are collecting if you're collecting that that's awesome but for me I'm still sitting on my Night of the Living Dead Blu-ray that I was proud to pick up, and now I'm looking stupid because I didn't wait and just buy the 4K. Um, but that's basically what Criterion is at this point. So hopefully I sped you up, and now we can go ahead and talk about what I collect. Now, when it comes to Criterion and collecting, my biggest piece of advice is one way for the sales. Do, never, do not, in any circumstance, pay 50 bucks for these Blu-rays like they normally are retail. Wait for the sales. There's like four sales a year, and you usually can get them secondhand pretty well, too. Um, and spend 20 to 25 bucks. So 20 bucks for a Blu-ray on sale, $25 on a 4K. A little steep price, but uh, some of these films are the best and only ways to get some of them. So um, unless you wait and you are, you know, one of those film connoisseurs and you just wait to 
till uh, Kino swipes up the label and, and puts a pretty sweet slip cover in 4K on it. So shout out Kino Bruh. there. We'll talk about Kino in another video. Anyway, today, let's go ahead and go through my um, Criterion collection. And obviously, I have a distinct different taste than a lot of other people who collect through the label. I don't buy every single spine number. But let's start with this one, Arsenic and Old Lace. I have a pile of all my Criterions here. We'll go through every single one. And I will also educate the uneducated on Criterion. So if you are a film fan, if you've been a follower of this channel for a long time, you might want to, uh, <laughs> you might be rolling your eyes and groaning because you know what kind of video this is. Uh, but if you look here with Criterion, it looks really cool. You get a cool little spine. You get the little artwork um, in the, the title. But this is the big thing. This is what, this is maybe... 99% of why people buy this label is because the spine numbers have a number starting from their very first all the way to the most recent. This is spine number 1153, meaning it's the 1153rd film released in the title. Um, at least this is the Blu-ray version, right? So Arsenic and Old, um, and Old Days is a Frank Capra film. I really just bought it because it has Cary Grant on it and I have such a man crush on him and I love his filmography. And uh, it, it, it sounds like a really good premise. Um, so I picked this up last year maybe two years ago um and i also have the vhs too which I, i've watched a little bit more than i even watched it with this blu-ray next i have is silence of the lamb this is a great pickup i know there is a 4k there was some transfer issues with that 4k so i'm pretty happy hanging on to this blu-ray and honestly this blu-ray looks pr pretty damn good i love the packaging on it too you get really great supplements you get really great features here this book is thick um and you get some really great artwork. So, like, with Criterion, yeah, like, the type of films, maybe they're not the most, collect like, easy to watch at times. Maybe they're not the most rewatchable films. But the packaging is top-notch, I will say. Although they do this bullshit sometimes where they put them in a nice little film case like this. And then they give you, like, this little, if I remove this, little cardboard flimsiness. You know, sometimes I pick a bone with, right, with Criterion like that. To me, this is the equivalent of the eco case phenomenon that standard blu-rays had for a little bit it's a little cheap it's a little lazy and i don't feel like i'm getting my money's worth seven samurai uh i don't know how else you own this movie this movie is a three hour black and white 1950 samurai movie it's quintessential and it's spine number two this is a great time. Ministry of Fear. This is a great one right here, too. This is a Fritz Lang film. It, I only bought it because I don't own any Fritz Lang films, and it had Ray Milan, and it's a 1940s, um, just before the end of World War II, kind of like seance, noir mystery film. It's all right. It's under 90 minutes long. Can't complain. Le Samurai, uh, bonjour, ça va, uh, messieurs. Um, this is Jean-Pierre Melville, Le Samurai, maybe his most famous film. I love Jean-Pierre Melville. I love his filmography. This movie is maybe considered his best. To me, it's a top three. Um, man, Alain Delon is like amazing in this movie. Great, cool score. I'm not going to give a review about every single movie, so I'm going to try and talk a little bit about some of my favorites and then speed run through the rest. But man, this movie is really nice. This is technically part of the French New Wave in some aspects, but Jean-Pierre Melville really did, wasn't part of that movement. His Girl Friday, one of my all-time favorite movies, one of my favorite movies in this entire collection. We'll be upgrading this to a 4K that inevitably will come out. Um, Cary Grant, Rosalind Russell, Howard Hawks, talkie movie. If you haven't heard of His Girl Friday... Um, brush up on it and watch it. This is a great movie for anybody. The Philadelphia Story, another Cary Grant movie, but this one has James Stewart. And instead of Rosaline Russell, this also has Katherine Hepburn in it. This is 1940. Um, this is a great movie right here. George Kukar, comedy director, drama director, um, during the 1940s. This is a good time. A lot of people say that this and His Girl Friday, similar covers, are some of the best in the collection, and I would agree. However, the Philadelphia story really isn't my biggest, like, you know, rewatchable movie. It's not my favorite, but it's still a good time. It's worth a buy. Tokyo Drifter. This is a 1960s Japanese kind of like interpretation of Jean-Pierre Melville. Cool trench coat, top hat, um, neo-noir this is a pretty good movie. I do recommend you pick this one up. Videodrome. This has a 4K release coming out. This also has an Arrow 4K release that came out. I bought this years ago. 
Um, the only reason I bought it was because I love the release of the packaging. So you get that and boom, it looks just like a VHS and it says long live the long flesh pause. Um, but yeah, this is a fucking crazy movie. Cronenberg. Yeah, you got to watch this at some point. Rafifi, haven't seen this. Um, this is Jules Dassin. This is a 1960s or excuse me, 1950s French crime um, robbery film heist movie. Um, I've heard great things. Just haven't gotten around to it. Actually, my partner uh, wanted to watch this recently. And uh, for some reason, I said I was tired. So stupid of me. Uh, but it is in French, too. So, sprechen Sie French? Or Français? That's German and French mixed together. <laughs> I think. Um, this is holiday. This is a great time. When I talked about my uh, top five, like, underseen or need to watch holiday movies... Um, George Kukar again, this is the one I was talking about, so I'm not going to talk too much about it, but another great, um, Catherine Hepburn, Cary Grant movie. Black and White, this is The Lady Eve, this is Preston Sturges. Oddly, still haven't seen this movie yet, I've heard great things, it's not because I haven't avoided it, but I just, I'm fucking lazy when it comes to watching movies sometimes, so, but this is 1941, um, do plan to watch it, I've heard nothing but great things, um, when it comes to comedies and romance, so, is that a rom-com? So there it is. War of the Worlds, still haven't watched it, I think there's a 4K of it too, that was part of the reason why I was kind of like, meh, so, you know, do I, I mean, I bought it because the cover and it's 1950s sci-fi and I'm a sucker for 1950s sci-fi, um, but again, just haven't gotten around to it. Now, what I have come around to is the Godzilla um, Showa era film box sets. I just hit myself with these. I do have the big booklet, but I hate how they house the discs. So I actually went out and bought these box sets on eBay. They're custom boxes where you can house all the discs. I highly recommend you do that. I got it through eBay. Covers are cool. I do wish I was a little more patient and I got the Etsy um, covers because... These are cool and all, but the Etsy ones look a little bit cooler though too. But look, you get the little spine on the back side too. So I feel like one of those fancy, you know, collectors. All about Eve. I'm all about hating this fucking release. Jeez, I'm a little angry because I hate these little cheap flimsy things. Like $20 for this. The first time I got this, it ripped. Oh, no, no, no. I did. It did rip. I thought I fixed it, but it, it's ripped here on the booklet. Um, I just need the clear case at this point. I hate when they try to get a little fancy with these little booklets. It's just, it's just not it. You know, they're, they're just doing too much with this, you know, but all about Eve 1950 best picture winner tied for the most Oscar wins. Really great movie. Iconic. Speaking of iconic night of the living dead. Wish I got the clear case. Part of the reason why I want to upgrade to 4k so I can get rid of this little flimsy um, release, but I love how we have a definitive version of Night of the Living Dead now. This is where I get canceled. Roman Polanski. Um, this is Repulsion. This is a great thriller. This is a movie about a girl who uh, looks over her sister's apartment, I believe, um, and she's getting over um, an attack that she, uh, you know, was the victim of, and she starts to see things and hallucinate while in this apartment by herself, and she's not sure if there's actually someone in there or not. Um, this is a freaking crazy 1960s um, thriller. This is part of that apartment trilogy that Polanski did. He did this. He did Rosemary's Baby. And I think it was The Tenant as well, which another crazy Polanski movie. I'm actually quite the fan of that Tenant, uh, like that apartment trilogy um, of Polanski, um, but can't support the guy, obviously. My Dinner with Andre. This is a great talking movie. When people talk about like underrated criterions, I feel like this is one of those. It's really good. You feel snobby and pretentious and like you know like more about film than other people. But at the same time, it's also a movie from film lovers um, and uh, talking about films that they love and, you know, existential crisis and everything like fun like that. So My Dinner with Andre. <laughs> I do have the Curious Case of Benjamin Button with the slipcover, which, you know, this is the memed movie. This was their attempt at trying to make basic editions of uh, <laughs> Criterions. But yeah, I, I haven't seen this movie since it first released, but I figured one day I'd watch it. 
Jean-Luc Godard's Breathless, 1960 French New Wave. I used to like this movie. It slowed down as uh, on one of my faves, I would say. I think I like it more for uh, its iconicness more than its story itself, but, you know... It's all right. I think there's also a 4K release of this. I actually got a new Jean-Luc Godard um, box set um, through Studio Canal with a lot of his works that include this. So I might have to get rid of this soon. Hakari. Um, or Akiri, excuse me. I haven't seen this yet. This is Makoski Kobayashi, who did a couple uh, samurai. I think he did a, a Japanese horror film, Onibaba, I believe. Um, or Quieten. I can't remember which. Um, but I hear this is one of his best um, and I, and I just have to check it out, you know, at some point, I think during the summer, um, or, or sometime when I'm alone and, uh, I don't have any responsibility, which I was previously unemployed. So I had plenty of time. Um, but I just making up excuses, um, where I'm just going to watch a bunch of my samurai and, uh, Japanese films, but I just keep watching Godzilla, unfortunately. So eyes without a face. This is a quintessential watch. If you're going to watch any movies, this would be in a top five from my collection. This is 1960 as well. 90 minutes, French, um, horror movie about a girl whose father gives her a new face and it's amazing. So yeah, watch this, uh, George. Next is the trilo uh, trilogy from, uh, Guillermo del Toro, uh, Trilogia probably butchered that um this is chronos devil's backbone and pan's labyrinth this is out of print to hell it's also a little beat which is why i never sold it but also this is the most cost effective way for me to own um all three of these films i got this used i paid like 25 bucks for this at one point um it houses a booklet it's a hard book has all three films here this thing is awesome and i know it makes nathan jones from um, specifically, um, DVDs with Nathan Jones. Uh, I'll put a link to his channel down below. I think he always covets this every time he comes to visit me. Next, now Voyager. This is Betty Davis, Claude Rains, Paul Heinrich. Um, I haven't seen this movie. I only bought it because of the actors in it. This movie's going to deliver the goods at some point. So uh, I'm waiting for that moment where I'm ready to watch this cheeky 1940s melodrama. Drama. Based off a of 4K rescan as well. Um, I'm a big Betty Davis fan, just based off All About Eve, to be honest with you. And Burnt Offerings, um, which she's in. Roma! This is from Alfonso Cuaron. Again, one of those flimsy little cheap things, but I really bought this because I love this movie. It should have won Best Picture, and this book is just dense. I love Alfonso Cuaron's work. Um, this is one of my favorite releases. This is one of those first early Netflix exclusive movies, um, that got a physical media release. So I, I was like, oh, if I don't get this, it's going to sell out and then I'll never get to see it again unless I have a lifetime subscription, um, to Netflix, which I really don't. So yeah, I have Roma as well. Great Mexican film, honestly. The Princess Bride. Oh my God. Ooh, as you can tell, I don't crack this open too often. Actual book. Um, as well in here, which is great. This also has a new 4k release <laughs> as well So I know I remember the days when I got into collecting and this release pissed people off and um, Honestly, I love how Criterion stood on business with this release and now they put out a 4k and people love this release I think now so again, they get a little creative sometimes they miss the mark with those flimsy little, you know fucking plastic little things like all about Eve and then they knock it out of the park with a booklet from Princess Bride so go figure the Awful Truth. This is Leo McCary. Um, again, Irene Dunn, Cary Grant, 1930s. Um, you know why I bought it. It's because it has Cary Grant in it, and it's a 1930s, 1940s, uh, you know, comedy. And uh, this movie is pretty good. I love the ending to this movie where they're trying to, you know, stick up with their divorce or their separation, and then they stay in separate rooms. And they just can't contain the affection that they still have for each other. Like, it's just great. It's just peak, you know? This was the golden age of cinema. Cinema has gone down since the 1930s. I'm going to stand by that. And I'm the best person to let you know that is the truth. Barry Lyndon, still haven't seen it. Actually, I've seen some of it, and then I fell asleep, and then never went back to it. <laughs> um, I plan to one of these days. Ghost World. Now, this is, mo this is a movie right up my alley. This is a Terry Z Zwigoff film. Very, like... <laughs> I don't know how to describe it, like teen angst, 1990s, or this, even though this is 2001, but it feels like a late 90s teen angst, um, Nirvana, binge watching, South Park, um, 
movie. I, I don't know. It just makes up all these kind of things that I really like. This feels very much like um, pre-Noah Bombac in a way, and uh, I'm here for it. Ghost World's a great time. Um, this is a gr- this is a great movie. It's not for everyone, but I really like it. And I love this cover. I love how it looks like a graphic novel. Speaking of Noah Baumbach, Squid and the Whale. Um, this is one of his most important films, I would say. It's one of his early movies. I remember wanting to watch this movie for the longest time because I saw a trailer and I loved the trailer for it with Jeff Daniel telling Jesse Eisenberg and Owen Klein that he was divorcing their mom. But this was actually my first ever Criterion film I ever bought because I didn't realize this movie actually had a Blu-ray and I discovered it on Criterion and I was like, in college, I was like, holy shit, that's the movie I've been watching, like been wanting to watch for the longest time of my life. And here it is. And I bought it and I watched it in college and I watched it a few times here and there. And, you know, it started my love for Noah Baumbach, who's one of my all time favorite directors. Um, So shout out Squid and the Whale. Very important piece in my cinema journey. On the Waterfront, Marlon Brando, Elliot Kazan, 1954. One of the best years for cinema. I mean, you get Godzilla, right? I mean, you get... um, You get Godzilla. (laughs) And you also get On the Waterfront... Um, this is a great movie. I love this release, although I hear it's getting a 4K. If you haven't seen All the Waterfront, this is such an anti-capitalist, you know, pro-community, um, pro-union, pro-cinema movie. This is Aces. I love this movie. This is a good time. If you're going to watch, um, some 1950 films, you got to put On the Waterfront, honestly. The Trilogy of Life. This is from um, Acquired Taste, Pier Paolo Pasolini. Um, I've only seen um, the Cameron, and this is just basically like fairy tales from him. Um, very, very progressive director, very controversial director. Um, and, you know, most of the works I've seen from him, I really like. I'm fascinated by his life. I still haven't seen Salo. I haven't seen a couple other movies, um, but I've seen like four of his movies and i've liked the four i've seen so far so um i'm gonna give credit i blind bought this because i couldn't pass up the price was like 35 bucks or something at the time and i thought it was going out of print and uh i needed to watch these movies at some point so and now there's a box set which um you know when i get liquid i'll probably pick up at some point recent acquisition days and confused on 4k um I really like this movie and I hadn't seen it in a while and I wanted to see it in 4K and my God, it was beautiful. It's trying to see Ben, um, Ben Affleck tried to paddle, um, incoming high school or freshman in 4K was something I didn't realize I needed Dolby vision. It also has, um, really great, like HDR in this flimsy again, but you get a lot of, you get a poster, you get a booklet. Um, and you get this really cool case. Like I said, it's a little all over the place, but so is this movie in some ways. And, uh, yeah, you gotta own Days Infused, right? Rosemary's Baby does have a 4K. This is the Blu-ray that's out of print, I think, technically. The Blu-ray looks great. Um, I know Daniel from the Cobweaves channel, uh, had said that, uh, you know, there's, you know, he did a review on the 4K. I don't like that cover either. I'll probably buy the loose disc and throw it in here just so I can have both. Cul-de-sac, another Roman Polanski film. This one has Donald Pleasance in it. This is a really creepy, claustrophobic kind of movie. This movie's a little unsettling, but it's a good time as well. So, again, the Polanski movies I own, it's because they're good. I like them. And then we have Titsy, which is a movie I liked the first time. I actually liked a lot, and I think it's slowly wearing off on me. Um, but Dustin Hoffman and Titsy, right? Next, we have um, David Cronenberg's Scanners. I bought this last year because I've been hankering to watch some crazy sci-fi. And this is some crazy sci-fi. This isn't too bad. It gets me really invested in the Scanners world. So I bought Scanners 2 and 3 um, through Scream Factory. Um, this movie starts off a little slow, but I like the cheesy build-up to it. So, um, yeah, check out ca- um, Scanners if you haven't seen it. I do love when the face blows up. That's pretty crazy. Speaking of crazy, crazy amazing, that is Francis Ha. One of my all-time favorite movies. Um, this is Noah Baumbach's best movie, in my opinion. I watch this movie constantly, consistently. I need a 4K. I need an Ultimate Edition. I need... But I love Francis Ha. This is such a meme movie. If anyone who knows me, she's literally me. Um, great time. I might even just watch this tonight, too. Fuck it. It's like a, sh- it's like a callback to, like, 1960s 
um, French films, but like it's an indie film and it's like a coming of age film and Greta Gerwig's in it and it has Adam Driver in it and it's directed by Noah Baumbach with an awesome score and it's just, oh, it's just perfect. It's just the perfect movie. The Uninvited. Uh, 1944, Raymond Land. Uh, this is a great movie. This is a, I feel like I talked about this movie early in my channel and I felt like people caught wind and then everyone said the uninvited is one of the best movies in the collection because it is, it's, it's a great ghost, um, ghost house movie. I, I fell in love with it. The first time I watched it, this is another early criterion that I bought only because at Raymond land, it was a 1940s ghost horror movie. And, um, yeah, I see people talk about it all the time and I think that's great. Um, I still really enjoy this movie. I, I think if you want a good horror, like an old classic horror movie, this is the your route. See, the Criterion has some good genre films. You know, it's not all just black and white, existential dread movies that are three hours long. Double Indemnity. I uh, had the Blu-ray of this for a long time. I had the Eureka. And uh, I just didn't like it enough to keep because once I saw that Criterion was doing this, I have to buy every Billy Wilder movie I see. Like, the only ones I'm, like, a little hesitant on are the Kinos. Um, but I'm still going to buy them. And if Criterion puts out Billy Wilder, which I'm always fearful he's going to put out a box set. But every Billy Wilder um, Criterion release, the covers are immaculate. This is in 4K as well. But anyway, let's keep going. Next, I have a recent acquisition. That is The Devil in a Blue Dress. This is from Carl Franklin. And I'll be honest with you, I haven't seen it yet. But it was highly recommended to me by the Barnes & Noble employees who shot that boy out. And I saw some good reviews on Letterboxd. Plus, it's the 4K 1990s Denzel in a neo-noir movie. Just sounded really interesting. I like his 90s stuff with Spike Lee. So, we'll see what... uh. We'll see what we think. Have you seen Blue uh, Devil in a Blue Dress? Let me know down in the comments below. What Am I missing out or on anything? Next, I got another Blu-ray. This was a gift by um, someone who specifically collects DVDs. I got the 4K release of Menace to Society. Well, son of a bitch, got me the Blu-ray. Uh, th this is the Menace to Society Blu-ray. It comes in one of these flimsy little things again. Um... I haven't seen this movie. I guess I uh, should ch probably change that. It looks right on my alley. It looks like um, a very interesting early 90s film. 7.1 surround. That sounds really loud. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is Menace to Society. Oh, one of my favorite movies in the entire collection. One of my favorite animated movies ever. This is Fantastische Planet, La Planon Sauvage. Uh, that is French for Fantastic Planet. This is a 1970s French animated sci-fi movie. This is bonkers. This is psychedelic. This is this is just cool, baby. This is just a good movie. Um, basically, it's a Marxist film. It's about um, small humans who were enslaved by this blue alien race. And uh, they have to survive um, this fantastic planet um, full of monsters that eat them and try to survive. It's just it's just trippy. It's awesome. It's cool. When I think of movie, more movies that need to be in the collection are these kind of movies. Um, God, this movie is so great. I've seen it so many times. I love this movie. And it comes with a poster um, as well. It's got that really cool Ralph Bashke kind of uh, animation as well. It's such an amazing jazz score. It's just so cool. It's so sweet, baby. Dressed to Kill, another movie. Um, this is Brian De Palma. I still haven't seen this movie. This was gifted to me, and I don't give out gifts. So I know this movie has a 4K. I think this movie's been put out through the Arrow. I think it's been put out by almost so many other labels. Um, but I still haven't seen it. I haven't gotten into Brian De Palma. I think it's my fault because the first movie I watched from him was Scarface. And I wasn't that crazy about Scarface, so that might have ruined it a little bit for me. Um, but I will change that at some point. Following um, Fantastic Planet, um, La Flano Sauvage, this is uh, Watership Down. This is one of those famous Criterion releases because this is one of those infamous, um, super dark um, kids movies. This is Watership Down from 1978. I'll be honest, I'm a little let down by this movie. It's not as good as I thought it was going to be. I saw this years ago, so it's due for a rewatch. Again, it kind of has that Ralph Bashke kind of animation as well. Um has John Hurt in it, um, is one of the voice directors. 
uh, voice actors, excuse me. Um, but yeah, I, I would check it out. But I do feel like this is one of those movies like, oh, it was so crazy that this was a kid's movie. And now it's got, you know, on a boutique label for adults to buy. Um, that's Watership Down. But, you know, it's not a bad movie. It just I was a little disappointed. Next is Minding the Gap. This is a documentary film. This was an Oscar-nominated documentary film directed by Bing Liu, which is about Rockford, Illinois, which is where I'm from. So this is a hometown documentary movie, so I had to buy it, of course. Um, this is a really good movie. Um, I actually knew the college he went to, Bing Liu. I knew the high school he went to. Um, really cool for him. Really great that, that, that Criterion put this out. I th was surprised that my hometown had a documentary. Um, and it was an Oscar nominated movie. So, um, I would check this out if you're interested in like contemporary, um, skateboarding, um, coming of age, facing harsh realities, I guess this is a good time. Um, but yeah, shout out Mindy the Gap. This is a really good documentary. It's good to plug in <sighs> and think about home. Um, speaking of home, this is one of my favorite background movies to watch. This is The Irishman. Now, I do like Martin Scorsese, The Irishman, but the reason I picked this up, well, it is a Netflix exclusive. And, you know, at the time with these Netflix exclusives, I thought we would never see them on disc and I'd have to be, uh, serve, uh, you know, serve, um, you know, Netflix for all eternity to be able to watch this movie. Um, but the main reason I bought it was because of this. This is what, I bought this at Family Video. This is when Family Video got a bunch of Criterion physical copies somehow um, and was selling them for 10 bucks in store. So, you know, instead of being, um, you know, an indentured servant to Netflix, I have to thank the almighty Family Video, which is sadly closed, breaks my heart. I, I wish Family Video and places like that were still open. But you used to be able to buy Blu-rays um, and physical media there for dirt cheap prices. So this Criterion was 10 bucks when it first came out. And uh, I will treasure it always. And speaking of, writing that same wavelength um, of Criterion Netflix movies, one of the best ever. This is Marriage Story. This is one of the first pre-ordered Criterions I ever owned. Um, mostly because when you... Pr I was afraid if you, they were going to run out of copies because it was a Netflix exclusive. Came out the same year as Irishman as well. Um, but you get the two letters that were written, um, by Charlie and Nicole in the movie. And I just think that's so awesome. And, uh, again, I thought as yeah, a Netflix exclusive, I'm never going to own this movie and it's a Noah Baumbach movie. So I have to own the movie. And, uh, luckily, um, you know, Criterion came through. They do cool things like that. You know, they saved me from indentured servitude of, uh, owning a Netflix subscription so I could just buy the you know, Blu-ray. Need a 4K, actually. If you're going to be re-releasing things, get a 4K out. Um, bringing a baby. Okay, listen. The only reason I bought this was because it's a 1930s film. It's got Katherine Hepburn in it. And it's got Cary Grant in it as well. So, you already know. It, oh, it's directed by Howard Hawks. Even better. You already know why I bought this movie. Stop asking dumb questions. Next, I have is Inside Lewin Davis. Now, this is a great movie, surprisingly, by Joel and Ethan Cohen. Um, this is one of their rare good movies. This has Adam Driver, Justin Timberlake, and Oscar Isaac. And Oscar Isaac, oh, and John Goodman. Oh, man. Yeah, and, it's a, and it has a cat in this movie. And it's, even though I'm not crazy about the genre that is, um, you know, folk music and such, it's got like Mumford and Sons, um, Jack White, and I think... I don't know. I'm trying to Lord Huron <laughs> um, and these other, you know, I just, yeah, folk music. Ugh. Um, but this is an actually pretty great movie um, from the Coen brothers. Uh, one of my few favorites from them. So um, I don't know where else you would own it except this cheap Blu-ray. So I had to. Um, and of course, you know, I have to own this movie. Um, this is Le Silence de la Mar. Uh, this is from Jean-Pierre Melville. Um, bonjour, ça va? Um, this is pre cool, you know, mob gangster trench coat, um, Elaine Delon, 1960s, um, cinema from him. This is late 1940s. This is like a drama post-World War II movie. So, you know, 
it's going to be a little different. I still haven't seen it, honestly, because I'm afraid <laughs> to watch it. It's under 90 minutes long. And based off, this is like early parts of Jean-Pierre Melville. And of course, I got to be like a stand to his filmography and watch this. But it gives me Army of Shadow vibes, which is a great movie. But man, it just killed me. It defeated me. Uh, next is Y Tu Mama Tambien. This is from Alfonso Cuaron. Um, this is um, Diego Luna, Gael, Garcia, Bunuel, and then um, I forget her name, Maribel Verdu. Again, this is early 2000s. I always heard about this movie growing up, and I was never really allowed to watch it. And then as an adult watching it twice now, I understand completely why I'm not allowed to, I wasn't allowed to watch it. It's very sexual. It's very sexy. It's very um, uh, posh. It's very comical in some ways. It's a coming-of-age movie. Um, so... Very much recommend you Tumama Tambien, but it is not for everyone, okay? It's got that Latino spice in it a little bit. Some of y'all don't got that taste bud. Um, and then next, I have finally, um, I have the Jacques Demi box set. Seen a couple of the movies in here. There's some pretty good stuff. I love his expression. It's like me. It's like, oh, great. Another um, re-release of movies everyone's bought in the most recent sale that are getting a 4K upgrade. They're going to love us and keep supporting our you know, collection because of that. Uh, but honestly, pretty good movies. I've seen Lola. I've seen Umbrellas. I've s I think the last movie I saw was The Young Girls of Rochford. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, I got this as a gift. I think this is out of print now. I'm not sure. But uh, I will never get rid of this. This thing is awesome. I love how colorful and cool it is. And no Criterion Collection is complete without the granddaddy of them all. And that is the Igmar Bergman Cinema Box Set. Now, this is the box set that put me on the map. This is the box set that started my YouTube career. Um, and uh, I've paid it forward dearly by hardly watching it since then, since its release, <laughs> like most collectors. Um, and here's the thing. I bought it brand new, and it's damaged, permanent damage. It's ripped to shreds here. It, you can I can actually open it up in here. And all the way down here, it just ripped to shreds and the reason being my chubby cat big boned cat jonesy um sat on it once she knocked it over and then sat on it and her weight crushed it to the point of damage permanent damage so i will never get rid of this for obvious reasons and i look forward to the day where it just will just break apart on me and i just go <sighs> well i know what i'm buying next sale so yeah there you have it that is my complete Criterion Collection. I hope you all enjoyed. What were some quintessential, must-own, essential Criterions that I need to own in the next sale or in 2024? What were some omissions that you noticed? Maybe some recommendations down below. Comment down in the comments below. If you are new to the channel, if you like this kind of style of video, please consider subscribing to the channel. Let me be your movie guy in 2024. We're going to be talking way more boutique labels down the road and more figures. Um, I really appreciate the support. If you are um, a first-time viewer and you stick so far to this, um, I hope these videos help. We talked about the Screen Factory label. We did a live stream with the Arrow video. Now we did the criterion so um what label would you like me to talk about next down in the comments let me know um down below i would appreciate that don't forget to check out the new instagram channel at figure out films um, that we can see some of my recent hauls and then also stay tuned for live streams as well uh, where you get to see some secret reveals as well um so thank you all for tuning in this is figure out films my name is chris as always and remember if you are not collecting the criterion collection i think you can actually still care about cinema uh, but other than that, I'll see you next time.